Hola de nuevo. Video número 4 de las expresiones idiomáticas en español. Ok, so, right, we're in the D's. And here was one I missed. I, I jumped ahead. This one is dar cosa. Ok, dar to give, cosa, thing. Ok, what it means in Spanish is when you say, for example, uh, la, la, el algodón me da cosa. Okay, cotton wool makes me go funny, makes me feel funny, makes me feel weird, makes me feel uh, it's like that. Uh, okay, me da cosa. It, so they tend to use this whenever they're talking about something that repulses uh, you. Okay, it's something that's repugnant. Um, it can be strong or light, a light. It really, you know, depends on how you put it. But you can say, oh, no, no, no quiero verlo. Me da cosa, me da cosa. I don't want to see it. It, it, oh, no, it makes me feel awful. Yeah? So, me da cosa. So, I could say to you, eh, ¿qué pasa? ¿Te, te da cosa eh, esa peli? What's wrong? Is that film making you feel uncomfortable? Sí, me da cosa. Me, me da cosa verlo. Yeah, I don't, I don't like seeing it. Okay? So that's quite often. It's used a lot, eh? Dar cosa. It gives me thing. That's how you have to remember it. Oh, that gives me thingy. Makes me feel thingy. Okay? <laughs> Dar cosa. Okay. El siguiente. Ah, esta frase. Darsete bien. Darsete bien. What on earth is that? Okay, or darsete mal. That one is being good at something or being bad at something. So, I'm good at playing football. I'm bad at playing the piano. Okay? So, how, how it's broken down is this. It's got darsete bien. Okay. So, you say this. It's... There are other expressions like this, but it goes like this. Se me da bien jugar al fútbol. Se me da bien. So look, take the me out, okay? So you've got se da bien jugar al fútbol. Um, it gives good playing football. Okay, it doesn't really translate very well, but basically this means good at football good at football it's it's good at football and then what you do is you pop yourself in there to show that you are actually the one that it's it, it, you're good at football yeah so se da bien jugar al fútbol se me da bien jugar al fútbol se me da bien jugar al fútbol okay o no se me da bien por ejemplo that's true for me no se me da bien jugar al fútbol Pero se me da bien cantar. So I'm good at singing. Se me da bien cantar. So you're just bolding a verb on in the end. Yeah. Um, o no se me da bien cantar. I'm not good at singing. And you can change bien to mal. Se me da mal cantar. I'm no good at, I'm bad at singing. That's basically it, isn't it? So, se me da bien, se me da mal. Okay, so it's bien and mal. Badly or well. Okay? Now, so asking somebody a question, are you good at uh, playing the piano? Se te da bien tocar el piano? No. Se me da mal. Or, what about this one? You can actually just put a, a, a noun on. So you can say, now listen to this one. Mathematics. Las matemáticas. Okay, it's plural. So what happens, just like with gustar and things like that, you need to change the verb from da to dan. Okay, because you're saying mathematics give you well. Okay? So you say, se te dan bien las matemáticas. Se te dan bien las matemáticas. And you say, 
Oh, no, no, no. Se me dan fatal. I'm terrible at them. ¿Ok? O oh, sí, se me dan muy bien las matemáticas. Yeah, I'm really good at maths. ¿Ok? So you, your choice is se me da bien o se me dan bien. It depends on what you, whether you're talking about something plural or something single. And the only thing you need to change is the pronoun. So I can say se me da bien, se te da bien, you're good at it. Se le da bien, he's good at it, she's good at it. Se nos da bien, we are good at it. Se os da bien, you all are good at it. Se les da bien, they're good at it. So it's just se da bien and you change the pronoun according to who is good at it. Okay? Very, very handy, very good expression. When you get accustomed to using that, then you can be comfortable with other things like se me olvidó, se te olvidó, I forgot, you forgot. It's exactly the same structure. This structure happens quite a lot in Spanish. If you read Harry Potter books, all the time, all the time that structure's there. There's a reflexive verb and then somebody in the middle of it being kind of the victim of the reflexive verb, okay? It's very common in Spanish. Okay, now, next one. Denunciar. Denunciar. In Spain, honestly, I hear this word constantly. Constantly. It's like, and it means to report. It means to report somebody to the police. Okay? In Spain, there's a, um, a system which is if somebody causes you grief, somebody causes you a problem, um, you can denunciarle. All right? And it, you go to the police, you report them and the police must investigate. They must. So what can happen is you can cause somebody, if you, if you wanted to, you could cause somebody a lot of hassle by constantly uh, denouncing them, okay? And the police keep coming to the house and investigating, they've got to do it. So all the time in Spain they'll say, bueno, deberías denunciarle. Bueno, le voy a denunciar. Te voy a denunciar. I'm gonna report you, I'm gonna report him. You should report him. Deberías denunciarle. Uh -huh. And so it's very, very common. It's like any a slightest bit of the neighbors making a noise. Le voy a denunciar. I'm going to report him. Yeah. Somebody looks at you badly in the street. Te voy a denunciar. Okay. <laughs> we don't do that in the UK. So for me, it's very unusual. We, we can report people, but but we don't because we're British. Um, we mind our own business. So, next one, de repente, de repente. De repente is a fixed expression and it means suddenly, suddenly. So you can start the sentence off with that. Sabes, de repente hay mucha gente en la plaza. Suddenly there are a load of people in the square. De repente, de repente entró este hombre. Suddenly this man came in. Okay? So de repente just means suddenly. It's a nice one. De repente. And you can practice your R. Okay. De retraso. De retraso. Now that means delayed. When you're looking at a train or a plane or something like that, you can say, um, oh, El tren llega eh, con una hora de retraso. The train is arriving one hour late. Con una hora de retraso. And you can use retraso to say, hay un retraso, there's a delay. Okay? When I do Skype classes, sometimes if the connection's not so grand, there's hay un retraso. Con el audio. There's a delay. Okay? Un retraso. So, el tren llega eh, con 10 minutos de retraso. The train's 10 minutes late. O el tren llegó con 10 minutos de retraso. The train arrived 10 minutes late. Okay? And then, hmm, that's it. We are 10 minutes, so I'll have to wait until the next video to give you the next log. We're still in the Ds. We've got to go all the way to Z. 
a lot of expressions. But hey, you can watch these and watch them again. Bueno, chicos, eh, ha sido un placer. Nos vemos en el siguiente video. Yo voy a tomar un café ahora, un descanso, porque ya estoy un poco cansado de tanto hablar. Vale, hasta la próxima. Adiós.